Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing good. I'm doing great as always. And hey, I got a new mic. Yay. <laughs> Looking online, I've noticed there's been a lot of hype around a camera that has been out for a while. It's the Fujifilm X100V. So anyway, I've been noticing there's just a ton of hype around this camera. So I wanted to check it out, give it a test drive and see if the hype is real. So yeah, let's give it a quick look. So just a couple notes about this camera if you're not familiar with it. The Fujifilm X100V actually came out in February of 2020. So it's almost three years old. It's a 26.1 megapixel APS-C sensor camera. It has a fixed lens, which means this is the only lens you can use on the camera. It's a 35 millimeter fixed lens, so it's pretty wide. It's good for a lot of different things. And it also has an internal ND filter that goes down four stops, which can be really good when you're out in the street in the daytime filming and you want to have a larger bokeh in your images, but it's a little bit too bright to handle with the, the ISO on that. Okay, so that's some specs about the camera, but really what we want to talk about today is why is this camera in particular being so hyped up recently? Why is there so much attention on this camera, even though it's three years old? So from what I could see looking online, this whole craze started basically with some TikTokers online talking about the camera, getting it hyped up, seeing how much they like it. And then as things go with social media, all the other people around kind of picked it up, started hyping it up and getting on the bandwagon. And then before you know it, it was really kind of just getting blown out of proportion about how hyped and crazy this camera is. At one point, I think when it first came out in 2020, it was about uh, 1400 USD if I'm, not, if I'm mistaken. And at the peak in the last couple months or so, it's gone up to almost $3,000 USD. That's double the amount for the camera. The hype of this camera and the interest in it has gone up so much that Fujifilm has actually stopped taking orders for new ones. And you can basically only really buy it uh, used out there. Um, and really finding that, like in Japan right now, it's about uh, Nijigo Mayen, which is like roughly in American, like $2,200 or something like that. Or maybe a bit more, depending on the type of camera you want to get. There's silver and black and stuff like that. So there's a large demand even here in Japan for this camera right now. And it's pretty interesting to see that it's like, you know, it's three years old. And then there was no real new technology in it, but people still really want to get it. So yeah, let's just talk about the specifics of why this camera is being so hyped and see if, you know, if it really deserves that kind of hype for this camera. So just a side note, I have been using this camera for the last couple of days. I borrowed it from my friend. He uh, uses it a lot for location scouting. Seems like it's a really good camera for that, that he likes a lot. Just so you know that I have actually used the camera. I'm showing you some photos that I'm taking with it. So this isn't all just coming out of nowhere for what I want to talk about. Um, these are actually my own opinions about using the camera out in the field, out in the street, and actually getting my hands on it and using it. So please be aware of that as I go through about what I think about the camera. So one of the first major points about this camera that people are really hyped about is the ease of use. And I would have to agree that yes, this camera is very easy to use. It's very easy to pick up and just enjoy shooting as a camera. I really actually like the analog dials that are on the camera, the sound it makes when you're switching through the dials for the shutter speed. Uh, the ISO is right here up on the top. It's very easy to, to find and it's very easy to use. There is an exposure compensation dial right up on the top here as well. That's very easy to use. Turns on very quickly. If you've ever used a Fujifilm camera, you'll be used to the menu system, which, so this is very easy, simple to navigate, simple to use. There's not many buttons on here, so it's quite uh, simple. It's just like a real simple port and shoot camera that anybody can really pick up and use at any time. The 35 millimeters for the focal length of the camera is quite nice to use. It's quite wide, really good for street photography when you want to get the whole environment in. Yeah, so I can see any kind of like, you know, beginner photographer and expert photographer picking this camera up and being able to use it right away and having no real issues using the camera as much as you know getting great shots as well as you can now saying that if you are a beginner and you are serious about learning about photography then i would be kind of hesitant in buying a fixed lens camera at the start one of the great things about photography is the ability to change lenses and change and by changing lenses you change the whole look of your image going from a 35 to a 50 to 85 105 they'll all give you completely different images even if you're shooting in the same spot so for beginner photographers I am kind of reluctant to recommend this camera in particular or actually any fixed lens camera just in the fact that as you grow as a photographer you're going to want to get out there and try different lenses and see how they work. You're going to want to try a zoom lens, you're going to want to try maybe a fisheye lens, just something else that will give you a different look. This 35 millimeter lens is great and I really recommend the focal length of 35 millimeter. But after a while of shooting with this camera you're probably going to grow out of that focal length or want to try other ones. And so I would more recommend maybe getting something like the X-T4, the brand new X-T5, or something else in your price range, maybe a used one, that you can get and be able to change the lenses themselves and then use that as a, use the body as a base and gather more lenses as you grow as a photographer. This is what I did starting out. I bought the Nikon D70 and as, as I grew as a photographer and my needs changed, 
I bought new lenses. And then we know every couple of years when a new body came out, I got it. But what's really important for growing as a photographer and showing your style and changing up your style as a photographer are the lenses more so than the body. So, you know, like I said, get an X-T4, X-T5 if you can afford it. Get a nice little 35 millimeter lens and start on that. It'll be really great. And then when you can, hey, maybe you got a little extra money and get a 50 mil or get a zoom lens or something like that. I think that in the long run, if you're a beginner photographer, will help you more to grow as a photographer and help you in the long run, for sure. Another point people were talking about online that they were really hyped about was the film simulations this camera has. Now this camera does have about, I think, six or seven different film simulations. And when I was out shooting, I was also using the film simulations and having fun with that. And what people say is that using the film simulations, you don't actually have to edit your images. You can just send them from the camera to your phone, post them online, and then you have a great image. And yeah, sure, you know, you'll have a cool, well, and kind of like a well filtered image that you can put up online really quickly and it'll look nice but again as you grow and your photography grows with you you're going to want to start editing your own images anyways i'm pretty sure one really cool thing that the film simulations do allow is you can tweak and change the internal uh, settings of the film simulations and do your own custom film simulations there are recipes online that you can get and put into the camera so that's really cool it's really neat and very convenient for sure but i think if you just rely on the film simulations that's another whole aspect of photography that you're kind of forgetting about and not getting the skills to improve at uh, in the long run being able to edit your Im own images and create your own style through your editing is actually really important nowadays i think you know if there's only six different filters in here or film simulations i should say then there's really only six different ways you can do your image. And if everybody has the same camera, then eventually, you know, what, like a lot of people are going to have the same looking style in that to the images. Not a bad thing when you're starting out for sure, when you don't know how to edit and you just want to get a quick image in that. But in the long run, you're going to want to start editing your images for sure. So just because there's a film simulator in there doesn't mean it's the end all and be all of editing your images. You know, I've been doing photography for almost 30 years now and I was using the film simulators and they look nice. But again, I found that I was tweaking them in Photoshop after when I put them in my, in my computer. And even if I was to take this from the camera to my phone, I'm sure I would still tweak a little bit as well. So yeah, film simulations are great, but they're not the end all and be all. And they're not going to that alone is not going to make you an amazing photographer. Another quick point about the film simulations, the uh, Fujifilm X100V is not exclusive to these film simulations. You know, like the uh, every Fujifilm camera that is out right now, I'm pretty sure has these film simulations in them. The uh, X-H2S that I borrowed has it, the TX4, uh, X-T4 had it. So it's not exclusive to this as one camera. So if, like I said, there are other bodies in Fujifilm's lineup that are great, maybe ones that have changeable lenses that you would like to use and you can still use these film simulations as you're shooting as a nice base to start off with your edit. So don't feel like it's those film simulations are only for this camera. You can use them for basically any Fujifilm camera out there right now. So that's really important to understand. Now another really actually valid point with this camera is it looks cool. Like this camera is really cool. I must admit the design is really nice. The weight, I love it. The build is very, very solid. The analog buttons are really good. The little lines on the camera and everything like that. It's really cool. I mean, I was out in the street, had it on my chest, um, hanging off my neck and that. And it was felt cool to have the camera on me. I really like the design of the camera. And, um, you know, even though I'm pointing out a few little negative points here and there, I love the camera. It's really cool. And I think it's a very, very well designed and very cool camera. Saying that, especially for beginner photographers, I don't think the look alone of a camera should be your reason for buying it. You'll get sick of the look eventually looks come and go the new best looking camera will come out eventually and just because a camera looks good doesn't mean you can take good photos with it for someone like myself who i already have all the gear i need for my professional photography i have the body of the nikon z9 i have all the lenses i want really by now maybe i want a few lights and stuff like that but really i'm kind of set for that kind of gear Picking up a second camera like this just for the fun and getting back in the simplicity of photography is a good idea. You get kind of bogged down in all your gear and to go back and make it simplistic and easy to use and just you and a simple camera. I had a lot of fun the last couple of days using this camera. It was really nice, really simple, and it was just really enjoyable to use. But if you're a beginner's photographer and you think, wow, this camera is super hyped. I want to get it because it looks so cool and that sort of thing. I really think you really need to look at specifically what you want to do in photography and how long you think you want to stay in it. Are you the kind of person that just wants a camera on their body when you're out with your friends, taking snapshots and that here and there? Then sure, yeah, why not? It's a great looking camera. If you can afford it, I'm not going to 
you know, talk down to anybody that has the money to buy a camera like this, even if they're a beginner photographer, that's awesome, that's great, go for it. But if you're looking to be in photography for the long run, like I said, I've been doing this for 30 years almost now, getting a camera that can grow with you, even if it's not the coolest looking camera, is probably uh, something I would recommend more when you're starting out. Getting a camera you can change the lenses and things like that is uh, much better for the long run, like I said. Even if it's not the coolest looking camera, than just picking up something that looks amazing and people online are super hyped about. So yeah, you know, in the end, is the hype real for this camera? Well, my personal opinion is it's a very good, well-designed, very nice fixed lens camera. Will it make you a better photographer? Will this be the end all and be all of photography? No, no, not at all, it's a tool. I'm very much a ninja when it comes to my camera equipment. I can pick up any camera, it's just a tool. If someone was to throw a Canon camera in my lap or a Sony camera in my lap, I think in five minutes I'd be able to go out and shoot just as well composed and uh, intriguing images as I could with the Fujifilm camera or my Nikon camera or anything like that. So don't think that just because everyone's hyping this up and says it's amazing that you need to go out and rush out and spend $3,000 or $2,500 on it right now. If you're a beginner photographer, I would really suggest investing that money in a body and some interchangeable lenses that you can get. Sure, start out with 35 millimeters, it's awesome for street, but for portraits, I prefer to be 50 or 85 or even 105. That's just myself, but as you get into photography, you get those little niche things that you wanna do with your photography, and being able to change your lenses in that is a huge thing. Me personally, if Fujifilm was to say, hey, we got an extra one, would you want it? I'd be down at Fujifilm. <laughs> in like five minutes and I'd go pick it up and I'd enjoy it for sure. In many ways it lives up to the hype, but I think for a lot of photographers, it's just uh, a little bit too confining for anybody who wants to grow as a photographer over the next even just six months to a year for sure. That's my opinion, that's just my opinion. If you have any comments or questions about this camera, maybe you found some amazing things you can do with it that I don't know about, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks again for checking out the video. Subscribe, hopefully this was helpful. Let me know again in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. And here's some more images that I took over the last couple days with the camera. So hopefully it, uh, hopefully you like the shots. Cheers.